There's always someone to blame for our problems, correct? Well, when it comes to localization and purists, there's no one more polarizing than Ted Woolsey. Having joined Square's American office in Washington in 1991 and having left in 1996, Woolsey is best known for his liberal translations in titles such as Chrono Trigger and Final Fantasy VI. Perhaps calling him the father of localization is doing him more credit than he deserves, but it was his work during the SNES era of gaming that would serve as the foundation for modern localization. While often attributed with the creation of the phrase, you spoony bard, this line is actually the responsibility of an internal Japanese developer with a subfluent grasp on English. In fact, it was his responsibility to avoid instances like Final Fantasy IV's English release, which was permeated with errors, but that didn't mean his job was one without strife. During his earlier days at the company, he would have little contact with Sakaguchi, often having to answer to Nintendo of America's then stricter rules to abstain from mentions of religious content or death, on top of Square's own decisions to censor or remove certain scenes for Western sensibilities. Working conditions were further damaged as Woolsey often found himself working as Square's marketing staff, meaning most of his work had to be done on his own with input coming from either staff or playtesters. Such strict demands were a problem in his earlier projects, with one asking him to create a deliverable translation within a month's time. This was worsened due to the pages of dialogue being thrown together incoherently, making lines dozens of pages of part flowing into one another with the in-between being irrelevant in regards to context. These problems were prevalent with Final Fantasy VI, known at the time as Final Fantasy III in the West, where Woolsey was unable to play through the game with text edits to ensure they were working properly. This resulted in numerous errors earlier on where characters and side quests were called he's instead of hers. Woolsey was certainly a dedicated man, but the largest issue he faced was cartridge size and limitations. Japanese is a much more compact language than English, so in some Something as such as a tweet, more information can be conveyed than elsewhere. His earlier deliverables often found themselves over limit, meaning 25-40% of translated material had to be cut, and that was after being rewritten to be as short as possible. While he was told to relax as these products were toys meant for kids, Woolsey felt it was improper to deliver a flawed product from what he viewed as art. So he did something most would find unthinkable. He scrapped the original translation and started over. Given the opportunity to play through each title, he took the given context, emotion, and delivery and created his own dialogue to fit within text and cartridge space. Key concepts were carried over to maintain consistency, of course, resulting in scenes that, while being different in regards to dialogue, conveyed the same events, actions, and emotions. If Woolsey still found himself over limit, though, he'd cut text that playtesters often found confusing or unfavorable. Terms and names were rewritten for the sake of the script, Nintendo's policies, and Western appeal. This resulted in magical technology being called Magitech, Holy being changed to Pearl, and Tina's name being changed to the more favorable Terra via playtester feedback. It's also why one of the characters in Super Mario RPG is not called James Bomb. But the larger shift came in way of Final Fantasy VI's Kefka. Internationally, Kefka's personality leaned more towards being a sadist, while in Japan he was more over a man and child, but both eventually fall into nihilism while sharing similar personality traits such as dark humor and being a psychopath. Oddly enough, the Japanese staff found the Western Kefka to be so favorable it was kept and expanded upon for both Dissidia titles. While such cases were hectic, Secret of Mana and Chrono Trigger would end up being his toughest projects both for different reasons. Secret of Mana ended up being due to development issues. While Woolsey had a more substantial 2.5 months to work with for its translation, it was being developed alongside the Japanese release, meaning when text was updated, translations had to be remade to match accordingly. However, by this point, Sakaguchi was more heavily involved, offering advice and support for Woolsey's work, even providing new translators to assist on Chrono Trigger, but their inexperience would prove to be a bit of a detriment. Chrono's larger script via multiple endings meant text text had to be cut down substantially, resulting in half the script being trashed and rewritten to preserve its metaphorical skeletal structure, along with the H from Chrono's name being omitted due to cartridge space. While Super Mario RPG would be the last project Woolsey would work on, never having the opportunity to work on Final Fantasy VII, he helped lay down the foundation for future Square projects, alongside localization companies, to turn simple translations into something more. While purists despise Woolsey's decisions, seeing them as sins against gaming, they've resulted in immensely popular scripts with quotes so loved that they were often kept for any re-releases that featured more faithful translations. This was evident in Final Fantasy VI on the Game Boy Advance, much to the dismay of purists. 
While games aren't restricted to such heavy size requirements and have more easily modified coding to allow for as much text as possible, the fundamentals of Woolsey's methods still carry on in localization today. You need good translators, script adapters, communication with the original developers, and playtesters to check for errors. Meaning most companies like Atlas, Namco, or Capcom do their best to ensure quality by forming their own localization departments, or outsourcing to companies such as Xseed or 8.4, who verse themselves in given products for better results. Each studio has its own unique way of handling such a delicate process that changes based on genre, themes, and settings, which brings a certain unique charm from each studio, be it with their more liberal translations or more faithful and straightforward endeavors that just make fans giddy with joy. While scripts no longer see such drastic rewrites to meet requirements such as this, it's the goal of modern localization and Woolseyisms to properly convey meaning and understanding to other cultures and languages as efficiently and coherently as possible, just as Woolsey did back in the early 90s, and studios do today, whether they're aware of their practices' origins or not. Hey, thanks so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed your time, and if you did, hey, be sure to hit that like, share, and subscribe button, helps me out in ways you couldn't possibly imagine. Thanks so much for choosing to help support the channel and its content, and hey, I'll see you next time and in the comments. Much love.